Mice Plague, New South Wales. The B-side word. Right, now imagine you're a farmer, yeah? In regional or rural, it could be anywhere, but it's in Australia. We're talking like New South Wales, Queensland, kind of going down to Vic and even a little bit into SA, South Australia. Now, these poor farmers, and we've spoken about it on our podcast before, they've been through a lot. We are talking droughts. It started with the droughts, then into the bushfires. Do you remember all those crazy Australian bushfire, bushfires? Then into massive floods. They've had COVID-19, more floods, and now they, after just finally getting some good crop, they have another issue. Another what seems impossible issue. The big issue is rodents, specifically mice. Some rats, (gasps) some rats, but mice. These poor farmers have lost as much as $300,000, some of them, in ruined crops. Because of the floods, the mice started to just come out of nowhere, basically. And it's been on the news recently that there is a mouse plague and it's going to be making its way to cities, they reckon, within the next couple months. Mm. Is that what they said? But at the moment, it is in rural and regional areas and there's been videos released of like farmers lifting up a lid or bale, bales of hail, (laughs) (laughs) bale, bales of hail, and like mice. Isn't that isn't that hay? Guttering hail. (laughs) Oh, you didn't realize? I I did not realize. I I thought you knew. (laughs) I was like, oh, isn't that funny? It rhymes. Bales of (laughs) hail. Bales of hay. And like, like we're talking, gosh, thousands yeah. of mice just scurry away. It's they reckon it's there's going to be a shortage on grain, locally produced grain and stuff like that because it's just full of mice. Um, because get this, mice can become pregnant as early as six weeks old, and have a litter of up to ten newborns every twenty days. Wow. So that is very hard to control. How long do they live for? Extremely hard to control. So supposedly they basically will live until sort of the winter months come in or the crops sort of die down. The food source basically dies down. But I'm guessing if they end up in the cities as a plague, will that food source it's going to be a lot harder to die down, right? It would get chillier, so I don't know if the cold affects them, like purely the cold, but they'd probably live longer in the city, wouldn't they? Mice or rats? Mice. We had mice in our house during winter. And if they can survive in an English winter, I'm going to guess they'll survive in an Australian, because the city's warmer as well. Yeah. Yeah. But see, what it says is, so I've got a little fact here. It says, how do my mouse plagues end? Yeah. Most, it says, most plagues end in July when food's becoming scarce and cold winter conditions stress the population. Um, at high population densities, disease can spread quickly through them. Um, aggression increases. They attack each other. Their wounds become infected more easily. Consequently, they're sick. They're hungry. They get more diseases, more infections. Uh, and then when populations crash, they crash rapidly. So over a period of like a couple of days to a couple of weeks, basically. Uh, uh, you, you, you said they get aggressive with each other? Yeah. I, when they're sick and hungry, they become more aggressive. Mice? Mm. I've never seen mice fight. Well, neither have I. I mean, they're probably not like tigers. But maybe from very placid to like, but let's say they did a (coughs) and scratch the other mouse, it might become infected. Are they definitely coming? That's that's what's predicted. They said that the mice are going to come 
on the trucks that uh, deliver our food from the country. And once they're here, they'll just... buying food no more, man. Once they're here, that. But in saying that, I have... In Rouse Hill, an area is not too far, there have been people that have been... Like, I think this lady caught six the other day, at, like, in and outside. Like, there was one in, in and there's, there's, like, others outside the house. Like, they're not that far. They're here already. Yeah. It's just going to get worse. Um, yeah. And see, you had one in your room, didn't you, Alexander? And you said it was lightning fast. Oh, yeah, they're quick, those things. Yeah, I don't actually mind them. I, I actually have a story. Someone I knew, because you know a lot of the time when you build a new home and then quite often you get mice problem fairly soon after moving in. Have you heard about that? Because obviously it's no, new I development. Yeah. Well, new development, so their land, like where mm. they were living has been gone, so they might turn up inside the house. Anyway, this guy, he had the mice basically make a nest in his sofa oh what yeah so he'd be sitting and then all of a sudden like mice would just come out of the sofa that's just where they decided to make a nest so we had to get rid of it obviously so alexander if you were a farmer uh, just a question because this is going to lead on to the next part of this story if you were a farmer uh, imagine you're wearing your overalls and you've got your boots on and there's these mice that take over your your hail your hail bale <laughs> And um, you just see it, like uh, you shake it, and there's this infestation of mice. What do you, what do you do to get rid of it? Like, what, what is your, what, what is your poison of choice? Well, you just said it. Yeah, I know. I'm giving the hint. I'm probably first of all YouTube starting there, but I'm probably because of the way that my brain works, going to come up with some trap. That is a catch-all. So something that is smart enough to trick the mice to go into it. But is big enough to contain as many mice as it needs to contain. Because the thing with poison. My hesitation with poison. Is how quickly does the poison kill it? Where are they going to end up? Because I don't want thousands of dead mice all over the place. And I'm just finding them for months and months and months. Mm. I'd rather know where they all are. Yeah. But I don't know what you do when you have like a barrel of a thousand mice. I don't know what <laughs> happens at that point. <laughs> yeah. I, well, first of all, I'll just let you know, because Peter, we all know who Peter is. Pumpkin eater. The people for ethical treatment of animals have, have, raised, a, have raised a hand and said um, it's unacceptable because a lot of the farmers are using poisons. In fact, they've been approved to use stronger poisons. Um they're using poisons to poison the mice. Um, and Peter said, this uh, is very painful for the mice. They they die a basically an agonizing death. And even though it's like the traditional methods, you should just try catch and release. When you have a plague, Why catch and release is probably not going to work. But. These, these Peter people, can we take a bucket of mice to their house and let them loose? They would just catch and release. I, I don't. I also don't wow. really like. Look, I wouldn't use a mouse trap. I had never have been inclined to. I remember even growing up in my house and being a kid and like being like, "Please do not use a mouse trap." When we had a mouse, and my dad was like, "Oh." Yeah, <sighs> so they that. tried to like do it a humane way, and they tried for a month, and then eventually got over it, and then just put poison, and it died the next day. But I was a bit devastated with that. So I'm not really up for killing them mm. in a horrible way. But I did see a really smart design talking about your catch-all, which I personally don't like because they still die. But anyway, this is what it was. Do you want to see? Do you want to know? No, I don't want to know. And I don't want to see. A cheap... I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to... I, I, CJ. I, 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 I will know, but I don't want to see. I won't see. I won't show you. It's a cheap <laughs> a cheap uh, Kmart bin with the lid where you just go like that, you know? You know the push lids like that? <laughs> like it's like a swing lid, a swing lid. And then you, sh- the person just smeared some peanut butter on the swing part of the lid and put next to the, the, the wall. So basically the mice would crawl up the side of the wall, but they said they'd probably recommend just a ramp. <laughs> just just put a ramp. Anyway, climb up and then try to get the thing full into the bin. It's too tall to get out basically. Mm. And they like the next morning they woke up and it was just like full of mice. 
Oh, they use this for the plague? They This woman used it in her regional home. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah so my, my version of that is very, very similar, but it was just the the instead of buying the thing, you just have your own bucket and the the ramp has a like is on a pendulum itself on the end. So when they climb up it, it then flips flips them into the bucket. Ah, got you. Yeah, yeah. But again, I don't know what you do when you have if you're on a farm. I'm guessing there's thousands. What do you do with a thousand mice? Unfortunately, they have been drowning them, so they fill the buckets and the bins and drown them. I would, I would get a blowtorch out. I'm gonna burn them. Jeez, tell us how you really feel. I, I, I see. Like, so I, I like all ideas, right? But like, this lady tried to, I think, try to do it the humane way. But I think she had um, jack of it after she saw the mice run across her pillow. And she said, nope, that's it. That's it. We're doing something like we're going to do something drastic now. I, I, like once she, I think you try to be humane. But once it starts like they start thinking that your house is their house, you start going, oh, God, I've got to do something now. If they're sleeping in the same bed as me, do you think you're not going to like that, are you? No, 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 no. Not that. That's a step too far. Don't get in my bed. <laughs> And also, they so they apparently brain. do like like they can bite you when you're sleeping and stuff, and you can get all sorts of diseases like yeah. leptospirosis and rat bite fever and lympho- lymphotic <laughs> <laughs> lymphocytic choriomeningitis virus. So I mean, no one really wants any of that. Yeah, when that gets in your lymphatic system, it's over, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Once you once once you mess up your lymphatics, it doesn't come back. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, one minute warning apparently a good uh deterrent is peppermint oil so you just put peppermint oil like and you like on a cotton bud or something can you just wipe it around your doors or cracks where they might be able to get in and it sort of repels them peppermint Mm -hmm. Hmm. peppermint oil Uh, uh, at least when they bite you they have nice breath (laughs) (laughs) that was really that's that's really cool (sighs) I started to search, research, like, what are mice good for? And it led me to mice are pretty important. They're pretty important to every ecosystem. I didn't realize that. And they're like, they feed the snakes, the weasels, the hawks, the owls. They're pretty much the the cows for the wildlife. Mm, Yeah. Like how we 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 breed cows, they're mm-hmm. they're they're to breed so that other people can eat them. Other Gen- animals, I'm not eating them. Other animals. Generally, other animals. I think because of like the um, I forgot what it's called, but like the pyramid of eating. Mm. Um, hmm. The pyramid of generally eating. the things, yeah. So like your. Uh, Protein, uh, carbohydrates, blah, blah, blah. No, not like our <laughs> macronutrients. Oh, got you. <laughs> like the... Well, I've forgotten what they're the called. food chain? I've forgotten. Yeah, but I've forgotten <laughs> what the... Food chain? No, but it's, it's, a, it's a pyramid structure, isn't it? So the ones not that the are at the top, there's fewer. One. And the ones that are at the bottom, there's multi, like there's a lot more. So generally, the more of something there is... Like yeah. naturally in the wild, if there's if there's a creature or whatever, where there's a lot of it, generally means it's quite important. Right. Mm. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I just never ever thought. I never like mice was just a thing. You go, you get out of your house. You know what I mean? It's not. You don't think. Oh, this is a very important part of the ecosystem. I never it's like thought, spiders anyway. as well. I'm buying. Like they're important. I'm buying an owl and spot and snake. <laughs> I'm just, we need it for him in the farm. Okay, I'm just going to end this, right? Mm. I saw a video of a seagull eating like a, a kitten-sized rat. It was the worst thing I've seen. It, he ate it whole. He ate the rat whole. And the, 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 the rat's tail was sticking out of the beak. And it was like, I don't think he, like the whole rat was in his belly, but the tail was just sticking out. 
I'm like, Jesus, I hope the, the rat doesn't hell? I hope the rat doesn't eat the seagull inside out. Oh. See, that would be my biggest fear is the animals that do that is what if not just eating but claws like oh. get yeah. the walls of your I, yeah. Oh my god. Surely. I don't know. Oh. What was your when you saw that? What was the biggest shock factor? The size of the rat or the eating the hole? Eating the hole, th- the 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 tail. It was still outside the mouth, Alexander. You know, like I was looking at, I was like, what the freak is going on here? And it was in the middle Wait, of did London. You see this in- oh, this is a video. Like, in- like, you yeah, didn't see video. this in person. No, no, no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would have taken my phone out. I'm like, oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> I'm telling you now, you would have been the first group that would have seen that. I would have sent to you guys straight away. <laughs> look at this. I don't know what the freak is going on, but look at this. This seagull's got a rat in its mouth and he's eating it. Well, quickly, quickly on that, because you said it's London with this plague thing. I think I was telling Emma about this. Apparently, we're, we're about to be in for it because the rats in London are bigger than they've ever been and they've become immune to the poisons and stuff we use. Oh, which man. means. Like the pest control and stuff can't really do anything about them, so we're we're, we're going to be in for a crazy year of rats. I think rats. I think, I think that's the prognosis. The B side word. <laughs>